In this lecture, we're going to talk about problem solving, specifically working with word problems. So let's start by going over an outline of how to solve applied problems or word problems. The first thing that you want to do when solving applied problems is read carefully through the complete problem. So read through, make sure that you understand everything that's being said, and determine what is the problem asking you for. Now that you've read through the problem, choose a variable to represent the quantity that you're looking for, and express other unknown quantities in terms of that same variable. Next, write down what you know from the problem. Sometimes using a table or uh, drawing a figure will help to organize information. Use the given information to create a mathematical expression which you can solve. Next, solve the equation that you've just formed for the variable that you're looking for and use that to answer your question. And last, check your answer. Does it make sense in terms of the problem? For example, if the problem is asking for time, you shouldn't get a negative number. So make sure that your your solution, your answer, makes sense in terms of the problem. Okay, the first type of problem we'll talk about in this section are simple interest problems. If a principal of P dollars is borrowed or invested for a period of T years at interest rate R, expressed as a decimal, then the interest on the money can be given by the formula I equals P times R times T. So let's use this formula to solve a word problem. So our example is as follows. First, we want to read through the entire problem. Wendy has $1 million to lend, but is required to average 18% interest per year. She can lend at either 16% or 19% interest per year. How much money can she lend at the 16% level and still meet the average requirement? So in order to organize the information for our problem, let's create a table. In this table, we want to consider the principal invested, the rate of interest returned, the amount of time, and then the overall interest gained. So on the left hand side, we're going to list the different ways that we can she, that money can be lent. Okay, so the first was a 16% interest. The second was 19% interest. And we also want to keep track of the total amount lent out. Since we don't know how much was lent at the 16% interest mark, let's let that be X. So X represents the amount of principal at 16%. We were given in the problem that the total amount that she can lend is $1 million, so we'll write that down with the total. And if Wendy has $1 million total and is lending X at 16%, then the amount lent at 19% should be the remainder, 1 million minus X. Next, we'll fill in the interest rates. We have 16% for our first row, 19% for our second row, and 18% for the total amount lent out. We weren't given any time in the problem, so let's assume that this happens in one year. So we'll put one in, ones in for all of the times. Now we'll compute the overall interest paid or collected. So for 16% interest, we multiply the principal times the rate to get 0.16x. At 19% interest, again, we multiply the principal times the rate to give us 0.19 times 1 million minus X. And for the total amount lent, we multiply the principal times the rate, so that gives us 1 million times 0.18, which simplifies to be 180,000. Now we need to use the information in the table above to create an equation that we can solve. So we want to find out how much money could be lent at both interest levels and still meet the average requirement of 180,000 interest. So if we add the interest from 16% to the interest for 19%, that should equal the total interest. So our equation is 0.16x plus 0.19 times 1 million minus x equals 180,000. Now we need to solve this for x, so we will distribute the 0.19 throughout the parentheses, giving us 0.16x plus 190,000 minus 0.19x equals 180,000. We can combine like terms on the left hand side, 0.16x minus 0.19x gives us 0.3x, so minus 0.3x plus 190,000 equals 180,000. We subtract 190,000 from both sides of the equation, so negative 0.3x equals negative 10,000. Finally, we divide both sides by negative 0.3, 
and we get x equals 333,333. So, we've answered our question. She can lend $333,333 at 16%. If we were asked to find the 19%, we would plug this into the 1 million minus x to figure out what, what amount she could lend at 19% as well. Next, we want to do a problem that deals with mixtures. So, the example is as follows. A candy store sells a box containing caramels and creams for $12.50. The box holds 30 pieces of candy. Each caramel costs 25 cents to make, and each cream costs 45 cents to make. How many of each kind of candy should be put in the box to make a $3 profit? Again, after we've read our problem, we want to set up a table to keep track of the information that was given to us. So we're going to look at the number of candies, the cost to produce each candy, and the overall price from the production. We're going to have a row to represent our caramels, a row to represent our creams, a row to represent the profit, and a row to represent the total. So let's start by assuming that the number of caramels in the box is X. And we were told that the total number of candies in a box is 30, so that means that the number of creams in the box will be what's left over from the caramels, 30 minus X. We were told that it costs 25 cents to produce a caramel, so the cost is 0.25, and it costs 45 cents to produce a cream, so that's 0.45. So to compute the overall price, we'll multiply the number times the cost to produce. So for caramels, we have 0.25X, and for creams, we have 0.45 times 30 minus X. We were told that we want to make a $3 profit, and that the total cost of the box of candy should be $12.50. Now that we've filled out our table with the information that was given to us, we should be able to set up an equation that can solve. So if the total price is $12.50, if we add together the three blocks above that, they should equal $12.50. So our equation is 0.25x plus 0.45 times 30 minus x plus 3 equals to $12.50. Now let's go through and solve for x. We'll start by distributing 0.45 through the parentheses, giving us 0.25x plus 13.5 minus 0.45x plus 3 equals 12.50. We'll combine the like terms on the left-hand side, giving us negative 0.2x plus 1650 equals 12.50. Subtract 1650 from both sides of the equation, giving us negative 0.2x equals negative 4. Then divide both sides of the equation by negative 0.2, and we get that x equals 20. So since x was the number of caramels, we have 20 caramels. To find the number of creams, we'll use 30 minus x, so 30 minus 20 will give us 10 creams. The next type of problem that we'll talk about is uniform motion. These deal with the equation distance equals velocity times time. So our example for uniform motion is a motorboat heads upstream on a river with a current of three miles per hour. The trip upstream takes five hours and the trip back downstream takes two and a half hours. At what constant speed was the boat traveling? So again, we'll try to organize the information that was given to us in a table. So we were gonna talk about the velocity of the boat, the velocity of the river, the total velocity, the time traveled, and the distance traveled. And we need to fill in this information for the trip upstream as well as the trip downstream. So let's start with the velocity of the boat. We don't know the velocity of the boat, but we know that it was the same going upstream and downstream. So let's assume that the velocity of the boat can be represented by the variable x. And again, since the velocity of the boat was constant between the two trips, the velocity downstream will also be x. When the boat was traveling upstream, it goes against the current of the river. So since the river goes at three miles per hour, we'll do minus three for the upstream velocity. And when the boat is traveling downstream, it goes with the river. So we'll do plus three as the velocity. And so our total velocity upstream is x minus three. And the total velocity downstream will be x plus three. We were told that it takes five hours for the upstream trip and only two and a half hours for the downstream trip. 
So we can find distance by multiplying time times velocity. So the distance for the upstream trip will be 5 times x minus 3. And the distance for the downstream trip will be 2.5 times x plus 3. Now, since the trip upstream and downstream covered the same amount of distance, we can form an equation by setting these two equal to each other. So the equation will be 5 times x minus 3 equals 2.5 times x plus 3. We want to solve this for x, so we'll start by removing parentheses. We distribute the 5 on the left-hand side to give us 5x minus 15. And we deliver, excuse me, distribute the 2.5 on the right-hand side to get 2.5x plus 7.5. We'll subtract 2.5x from both sides of the equation, which gives us 2.5x minus 15 equals 7.5. We add 15 to both sides of the equation, so 2.5x equals 22.5. Finally, we divide both sides of the equation by 2.5, and that gives us x equals 9 miles per hour. The final type of problem that we'll talk about in this lecture is constant rate job problems. Patrice, by himself, can paint four rooms in 10 hours. If April helps, they can do the same four rooms in six hours. Given this information, how long will it take April to paint the same four rooms by herself? Let's start by creating a table to organize the information given to us. So we're going to talk about the number of rooms painted, the time it took to paint the rooms, and the rate that comes from that information. We want to consider Patrice painting by himself, April painting by herself, and Patrice and April painting together. For all three situations, four rooms were painted. It took Patrice 10 hours to paint the four rooms, we don't know how long it would take April to paint the four rooms, so let's say X, and it takes six hours for them to paint the four rooms together. We can create the rate by dividing the number of rooms by the amount of time it took, so Patrice works at a rate of four rooms per 10 hours. April works at a rate of four over X, and together they work at a rate of four over six. So we can form an equation based on these rates if we add Patrice's rate to April's rate, we should get the rate it takes them to paint together. So our equation is 4 over 10 plus 4 over x equals 4 over 6. We want to solve this equation for x. We'll start by multiplying the entire equation by the least common denominator, 30x, in order to remove our fractions. When we multiply by 30x, the left hand side becomes 12x plus 120, and the right hand side becomes 20x. We'll subtract 12x from both sides of the equation to get all of our x's on the same side, giving us 120 equals 8x. Then we'll divide both sides by 8, giving us that 15 hours equals x. So it takes April 15 hours to paint the four rooms by herself.